What's going on, Cheese TV fans? I'm Joseph Randolph. And Brian Moffey. And this is another episode of Packers Draft Room. Uh, we're running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, we uh, took the weekend off to, to mourn the loss of one Aaron Jones. But uh, here we go. We're talking interior offensive linemen. We're talking guards. We're talking centers. Uh, Brian, uh, give me your evaluation on this year's class. Um, there's a lot of guys in this class, I think. Um, and actually, surprisingly, it's a pretty good center class. I think in the summer it was looking like kind of like an okay class. But um, it actually looks – it's actually a pretty good center class. And then there's plenty of guys – who are probably uh, college tackles who will probably move inside um, in the NFL. Yep. And if there's one thing that we know about the Packers and general manager, Brian Gutekunst, as far as when it comes to interior linemen, he loves to take the guys who are her tackles and uh, turn them into pros as, as guards. Uh, so typically a uh, high end athleticism, again, you know, the, the RAS metric that he loves to go off of. And then, you know, pull them in inside in case he thinks they might have uh, sometimes there's little measurements here and there, such as, you know, arm length, uh, maybe like the the upper reaches of athleticism where, you know, he said, you know what, this guy's better as a guard. And uh, so most of the people we'll be covering today are, are probably listed as tackles based on their college rosters, but uh, we're going to forecast them as interior linemen uh, today. I know a couple people in the comments on um, the last episode we're asking about certain prospects and uh i think we mentioned in the back end that you know they might be coming up today and uh here we are so um there's two guys we're gonna dig into uh early on and uh one of them is a center that brian alluded to and probably is listed as the best center in this year's class and that's oregon's jackson powers johnson uh i love senior bowl guys uh, he pretty much destroyed anybody who came at him. Um, but Brian thinks he's probably not on the board. Brian, would you like to share why? Yeah, just because he's a he's a lot bigger guy. Um, the Packers have have never drafted. Or, yeah, but going dating back to Ted Thompson, they have not drafted a offensive alignment over three twenty one. Um, they drafted two guys three twenty one, and they drafted a couple guys that were like three nineteen. But other than that, the vast majority of the offensive alignment that they've drafted have been like. 315 and under between 300 to 315 ish. So, and he's like three th over 330. Um, while I, th while I think he's probably athletic enough to probably play in the Packers zone, I just don't think they would, they would do it because like I said, cause he's like 330 ish. Yeah. I've got him listed at 329. Uh, I mean, that that's nothing, you know, uh, maybe missing a buffet meal or two, you know, to get him down to possibly, you know, 321. I don't think that's a huge thing. Uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'd like to think NFL offseason conditioning routines are a little bit better than in college because now you don't have the the possibility of, you know, trying to cram for exams and things of that nature. You know, college life that, you know, throws at you uh, anybody who's, you know, attended college. You know, we always talk about that freshman 15, which is in today's market is now a freshman 30. <laughs> but uh, I think I think Jackson in the right the right possible situation. I, I think good because at the very least would be somewhat intrigued. Uh, it's hard to project Jackson because he is a center. I, I don't think he's a first round guy just because of the position he plays. Uh, second round is obviously uh, definitely in play. And I think it just really depends. I think there is going to be a team that jumps up for him. Uh, it won't be the Packers in my opinion, but I think in the right spot, uh, I think he might be interested. I mean, one thing I like to bring up about the people, people look at me crazy is, uh, Brian Goodkins is a first time NFL GM. I know that sounds weird, but you know, he's never been a GM anywhere else. And I, and I think he's allowed to evolve and, and we've seen him evolve, you know, over the years in, in these drafts. So I, I don't want to say never say never on a guy as, as high caliber as Jackson, but, uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. But moving on down the line, we've got another uh, Pac-12 offensive lineman, which some of y'all were definitely uh, rooting for at the tackle spot, and that's uh, Washington's Troy Fontenot. Uh, Brian, why are we uh, forecasting him in the interior? Um, I think just because of his, his film and kind of his his body shape, he looks more like a guard. Although, you know, like, like we saw a 
couple weeks ago with his um, combine measurements. He came out with like over 34 inch arms. And just as the season's kind of, as the season kind of progressed, I should say, um, I kind of, at least for me, I kind of came more to the thought that I think he's probably going to play tackle in the league or at least whoever drafts him will start him out there. Um, and I think he can probably do it. Um, my only thing is I think he's better fit at guard. I think he has a higher upside as a guard. But um, I could definitely see some team taking him and putting him at right tackle and him being like a, you know, eight-year, ten-year starter right tackle. Um, but I just think, like, like I said, at least for me, like I said, I think his uh, upside is higher as, as a guard. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a agreeance. Uh, we were definitely concerned about the arm length uh, when we did the tackle episode. That was during combine week. We hadn't had the official measurements. I think a lot of the league had uh, his arm length in question. So he will pop up on some people's tackle boards. Doesn't mean that some people still won't take him and say, you know, you know, for, for our purposes, you're a guard. And uh, so for this, you know, Troy might be the best swing tackle in the class, a guy who can, you know, play tackle and then move inside if necessary. And the offensive line doesn't miss a beat. Uh, so, and there's value in that, you know, having a guy where he can play two different spots. Uh, I mean, look no other than, than Zach Tom being able to move from tackle all the way to center. And, you know, every I think every offensive or every offseason we've had, I think Matt LaFleur is always talking about just trying to find their your best five. Yep. And and Troy certainly is one of those guys that kind of helps makes that that conversation, that discussion among the coaches a little bit easier. Uh, I, I think I prefer him as a guard. But um, I'm also in a, the position of uh, some analysts have also said, uh, show me you can't play tackle. Exactly. Uh, I don't see him as a left tackle, um, right tackle only. And, and there's nothing wrong with that either. I mean, guys make millions and millions in accolades and whatnot just playing right tackle. Um, both spots have, a, have, a, have their role to play on the offense. So uh, I think he's on the board somewhere. Uh, I think just because of how deep this tackle class is, uh, the guard class, depending on what team you're talking about, maybe isn't seen as deep. Uh, center is deep just because of how many prospects we have. Uh, I think Troy might be trending to the back of the first round, possibly early second. It just depends. Uh, we've got, again, those, those quarterbacks are going to wreck everybody's board. And then now we've got receivers in the same mold. So Troy might be, I, I could see Troy first round, but I really think his, his, his value is probably going to be somewhere in the early to mid second. And, and if we're on the clock, I, I think for, for a swing tackle, I think Brian might be interested. Yeah, maybe at 25. Um, I think his value is kind of more second round, like, like you said, but um, I wouldn't rule it out and take him at 25. Now, there is a guy who's solidly guard. Um, this is our, our first, well, at least in my opinion, true guard, and that's Duke's Graham Barton. Um, Barton has been a shining everything for the interior offensive line class this year. Uh, some people think he can play tackle. I think his his all-pro, you know, future, you know, lies in the interior uh brian uh, what did you see in the tape yeah um i actually have him as as, cent as a center since he, he was a center before but um still again like he's an athletic dude he's tall he's a taller guy six five you know three ten ish three thirteen but um you know under 33 inch arms so that kind of takes him off the tackle board uh but he moves well like i said um you know and like i said he, in the emergency he could probably play some tackle but i think um to me, his future is at center. He probably could play some guard, but I think his future is at center. Um, he moves well, like I said. Um, you know, he can get to the second level and block those linebackers and and occasionally block some of those third level defenders and safeties and stuff like that. Um, not a powerful blocker, but you know, he's a he, he's a he'll get he'll get the job done type of guy, um, and he's a good pass blocker, of course, because of his uh, tackle experience. Yeah, um, and that's probably where he might get pinched at as center. You know, a lot of times centers are, are guys who can can just hold up. And uh, sometimes you're looking for a guard, a guy with a little bit more of a, of a more functional strength or maybe even more than functional strength, above average strength. 
Graham could, I think Graham is probably going to get trotted at guard. And then as a consolation, you might be, you know, plug him at center. I think center is the safe bet, but, you know, being six, five, you know, most centers are actually, you know, for NFL standards are considered undersized or normally about, you know, six, three, three. six, two, sometimes even six foot, yeah. you know, um, so at six, five, I think the team that does select him, whether it's the Packers or somebody else at six, five, they're like, okay, you know what? We're, we're going to put you out here at guard. And then also at six, five, not swing tackle, but emergency tackle, you know, like we done lost three dudes today and you just got to do it. Uh, yep. But um, I do, I do like his game. Uh, technique seems to be pretty good. Uh, again, you know, a lot of snaps at center. So, and the snaps at center are a little bit different than the snaps at guard. Uh, there, there are a little bit of different nuances there uh, versus when the ball is snapped. Because obviously, as a center, you're holding on to the ball. Versus in the guard, you can just go out and get them. Um, so, I, I think Graham is probably just because of the size. Uh, he didn't test. I don't, I don't have any testing measures for him. He's trying to, I no. guess, hold on to his draft stock. A lot of people have him in the first round. I think as an interior, it's really hard to project interior offensive linemen into the first round. I, I kind of like Troy Fott. No, I think he could sneak into the back end just depending on how he would like, like the board. But I think he's probably a, let's say a top 40 player, top 40 player. Uh, and, and we'll see from there. I, I think the, we, we're right there. You know, we're, we're at 41 and, and we're in the late 50s. Uh, is it a possibility that the Packers could be interested? Uh, I don't know. Without testing, I mean, I think we've still got some people to bring in for visits and maybe, you know, or even, you know, the Duke Pro Day, maybe, you know, the Packers could possibly be interested. But it, it's hard to really project guys who haven't tested. And then at that point, it's beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Like, what do you see on the tape, you know, compared to what you see to other guys who have tested? That's that's really what we're going to have to kind of gather from from Graham Barton's tape. So moving on, we've got another senior bowl standout, and that is Connecticut's Christian Haynes. Uh, Christian Haynes is, he's probably one of my favorite offensive linemen just because I've been scouting him since the 2023 class. He could have de uh, declared last year, and I would have without question, you know, penciled him as a day two pick. And now, you know, Another year, another year to get stronger, another year to get faster. Uh, Christian Haynes, I mean, I can't really say he put it all together. He already had it last year. It was just seeing it again. And, and that just kind of solidly put him on team's radar. If you didn't know about Christian Haynes last year, you were confused. You had some issues. Uh, he cleared that up certainly at the Senior Bowl. I think next to, to Jackson and Powers Johnson, I think Christian Haynes was probably – probably the best looking interior offensive lineman. Uh, he made some, some defensive linemen pissed off. I mean, to be honest, uh, there was, there was, there were a couple near fights because, you know, I mean, you think about it, you know, you've got edge rushers who are, you know, coming in with first round grades or they're from big schools like, you know, Penn state, you know, Alabama, whatever the case may be. And they're going up against a guy from Connecticut Connecticut that can barely win four games a year and you just get erased. I mean, guys, guys take that kind of personally, you know, and uh, that's what I love about Christian uh, small school prospect. And um, but he plays like he's been a blue chip coming right out of high school. Uh, what do you think about him, Brian? Uh, yeah, actually, I kind of got you beat there. I've been watching him since like 2021 when he first became a starter. Uh, but, but yeah, he's, he, he's an interesting player because like you look at his measurements and stuff and you don't think that like he would be a quote unquote Packers guy, um, just cause his size, he's just under six, three, you know, he's three seventeen. Um, but he's due to super athletic actually. And like, he's a great fit for the zone blocking scheme because of athleticism, his ability to get it to the second level again, block guys. Um, and it, but like, he's not just, um, He's just not an athletic dude out there that's out there that's just kind of getting in the way. He's a, he's a mauler. He'll he'll bury you. He'll put you in the ground. Um, and like you were saying, the senior bowl, there was some trash talking. He's he made some funny comment. Uh, I remember uh, 
uh, people know Damian Parsons from uh, Draft Network. He told me that he was right there. You he heard him talking some trash about. He told some defense lineman got angry at him. He told him something about like I can't think what it was exactly now, but it was basically like, oh, go back to your mama or something like that. Just some just some funny trash talking. The guy got mad at himself. So, um, but yeah, he's been like a three year starter. He's been really good at guard. Um, the only thing that gives me a slight pause uh, with the Packers possibly taking him is he doesn't have any tackle experience. The Packers really like their guards with tackle experience. But uh, outside of that, I think he'd be a great – he's a great fit, like I said, in the zone. He's a great athlete, like I said. And um, uh, another thing I really liked about him was his uh, his ability to do uh, do independent hand usage. You know, a lot of times college players, they don't – you don't see them really do that. It's something that they have to work on a lot. Um, a lot of college offensive line coaches are just te- teach them to use just both hands and not independent. But in the NFL, you got to learn how to use your hands independently. So I saw that on film. That's that really surprised me and really impressed me. Um, but yeah, it's like, like I said, if they took him, they could drop him in a right guard. He'd be a day one starter, ten year starter, possibly even Pro Bowl. You know, he's just that dude. Yeah. Um, again, a great, great athlete. Uh, he scored a nine, right at almost a nine point one for Rass. And I think honestly, the the really the, the you know obviously the Rass is also does size and you know athleticism. Right. I think just him just being slightly short. I mean, if you add it maybe probably an inch, an inch and a half to Christian Haynes, he'd probably be somewhere in the nine eights. Uh, and that's just a testament to how athletic he is. Yeah. I think the Packers, I think Brian Gutekunst is kind of making a shift, possibly. And we'll know based on the offensive lineman he selects this year on guys who have that mauling type play style. Uh, I think I've always said for a while that, you know, the Packers have been a, a little bit under, as let's call it in the, the Aaron Rodgers era a little bit more of a finesse team than perhaps they should be. And, uh, you know, we saw in those earlier years, you know, the back end of the McCarthy, the earlier LaFleur years where we, we had a little bit of trouble with those, those more blue collar teams in the league where we should have, you know, based on the athletes on the roster, we should have actually won handily. Uh, so we'll see, you know, based on, uh, the maturation of one Brian Gunnikunz, if we can see a guy like Christian Haynes uh, end up on the roster. Uh, he might be the one true guard, zero tackle experience guy on the board, and, and I'm okay with that because yeah. just because of his play style. And his athleticism, of course, you know, because, yeah, like I said, um, yeah, he's got that. He's, he's, he's done it on film, like I said. So um, he's like the one, one of the few guys I think they, they might make an exception for Let's hope so. He he's on my board, and I'll be I'll be grandstanding for him as soon as the the second round starts. So that he won't. I don't think he'll last past fifty five. So if, um, maybe you know I think we're at fifty six. So yeah, yeah, maybe he's there, but I don't see him pat. I don't see him falling out of the top sixty. He may be gone, maybe yeah. in the first ten picks of the second round. So we're moving to another you know swing tackle less dude. Uh, Another guy that, you know, the, the viewers at home were for grandstanding for the, the tackle list, and that's uh, Arizona's Jordan Morgan. Uh, he is one of my favorite prospects. Uh, he has, you know, the size. Uh, he has the, the hands. Uh, he had a little bit of some injury issues, but, you know, he does have experience. Uh, I believe about 25-plus starts out there, so – he, he, he checks a lot of boxes. It's just a matter of the medical. Uh, Brian, what would you say about Jordan Morgan? Yeah, uh, he was a three-year starter at Arizona. Played left tackle. Um, his first year was not great. Uh, you know, uh, his second year was a little bit better, but still not not super great. And then this past year was his, his, probably his best year. Um, but we're projecting him inside just because of the arm length. Uh, he's got the size to play tackle, 6'5", 3'11", but – under 33 inch arms, which um, we've established the Packers like their tackles have over 33 inch arms, more specifically, specifically 33 and a quarter. So, um, and then, but he's kind of got the build, a little bit of a build of a, of a guard. He's a little bit of a thicker, wider guy, um, but he's athletic, you know, like we said, um, he's a decent run blocker. Uh, I just think that's something that he would still need, need to do some work on, especially kick when he's uh, kicking inside to a guard. But um, I think, yeah, probably most of the league probably has him moving inside. Um, but um, yeah, I think he's probably yeah he's gonna move inside, and then he could probably be like a I would say swing tackle, but like a backup tackle. You know, if every tackle gets injured or whatever, um, 
you have got to go in there during the game if like you don't have a backup tackle activated he's your he'd be your guy that go in there to be that finish out the game and and he, you know, he'd be able to get it done. You know, you probably just have a, a line, uh, running back or a tight end, like help him out a little bit, some chips and stuff like that. But um, he could probably get you through a game of tackle. Yeah, just a, a just about a half inch short. I got him at thirty two and seven eighths yep. for the arm length. But um, the athleticism uh, certainly is there. Um, he excels on pulls, um, which. We'll, we'll we'll probably see a little bit more of as as the the true Matt Lafleur you know offense reveals itself. Um, uh, he's get right at nine point one two for Rass. Uh, I don't think he has per se the mean streak that a Christian Haynes has, but he does look to finish. And and that's in the run game you got to finish guys. You got to finish them, and then you got to move to the second level. And that's where Morgan excels at. So I, I love him as a, you know, guard with the addition of maybe being an em- emergency tackle, not so much of a swing tackle, but an emergency tackle. Uh, I think he did get good marks for the medical uh, at the combine. So hopefully that's all behind him. And I think it really just depends on beauty is the eye of the beholder for, for Jordan Morgan. If they see um, teams will see him as a tackle, I'm pretty sure the Packers won't. So as a tackle, he may be, you know, in that that first conversation of, of the top of the second round. If guys are looking more at guard, uh, he may the slide won't be very far. It may be in a, an additional 10 spots. I, I have him somewhere in the top 75. Um, it just really depends on if guys if teams rather look at him as a tackle or teams are looking to move him inside the tackle. The tackle crowd will know if, if we hear his name called earlier than what's expected. And, and then obviously, of course, the, the Carl to read off uh, tackle. But um, if he's if he's going to be an interior lineman in the NFL, I do think he'll probably fall just a little bit slightly more towards the middle of the second round as a as a high end guard. So, uh, we're we're staying out in the West Coast uh, with another big well, sweet, Pac-12 uh, offensive lineman, and that's Talise Fuaga. Uh, Fuaga is another guy with a big, mean streak, bully type of offensive lineman, um, but uh, he is a little bit bigger than uh, what the Packers like to go for, Brian. I've got him at 6'6", 324, um, and then I've got him, his arms just a little bit too short at 33 and one ace. Uh, how did you, how did you check him out, Brian? Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, similar. Like, and he played this past season heavier. He played closer, like in the three thirty range. Um, he's a, he's a, he's a dude. He's, he, he's, he's a mauler. He'll go out there. He'll destroy you. He looks to, he really looks to bury dudes. Uh, he was a, I think four year starter at right tackle for Oregon state. Um, and I think he's going to go pretty early in the first round. I think he's going to probably go before the Packers pick probably the top 15 ish. Um, and I think whoever takes him is probably going to put him at right tackle. And it's just, they're just going to be, again, like take him and drop him at their right tackle. And he's going to be a, you know, 10, 12 year starter, right tackle, possibly even pro bowl or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like you said, cause the arm length, I think the Packers would view him as a guard. Um, and they'd probably ask him to drop a few pounds, although he's not that far off their, their threshold of 321, but they, I think they're probably asking him to drop those few pounds. But, uh, you know, like I said, um, I think he's still going to go too early for the Packers. Uh, like, and they wouldn't move up for a, a guy that they view as a guard anyway. But, um, yeah, the dude's a mauler. He goes out to bury dudes. And his technique is pretty good, actually, because lots of, sometimes, you know, you get see that you get those maulers and their and their technique's not great, you know, and like, even, especially in pass pro, you know, they're, they're over their heads, over their, over their feet and stuff like that. And they're losing their balance and they're all over the place and stuff like that. But his, his athleticism and his balance and his technique is really good. Um, so I think he, like I said, he's probably going to be a, 10, 12 year starter, right tackle, probably go to a couple, a few Pro Bowls, but I, I just don't think he's going to be there for the Packers and he's probably not their type of tackle. Yeah. At, at six, six, I think pretty much the majority of the team of the leagues will just view him as a tackle. Uh, it's, it's not un, unlikely to see a guard at six, six, but normally guards are probably about at six, five and below. So it, it's, kind of going back to Troy Fontenot at Washington, it's kind of you, you you start him out at right tackle and then, you know, the arm length 
for the Packers will be a definite question. Uh, other teams, uh, it's a matter of uh, what their metrics might be. Right. Uh, I think he is probably going to go in the first round. Um, he is a Samoan, if you didn't know by the name. So typically the Samoan guys are a little bit bigger. Uh, but again, NFL off seasons can, you know, transform guys. And then also guys, you know, can also go out and do their own thing with their own, you know, workout, you know, partners and coaches, et cetera, et cetera. So Talise is probably outside of the range of the Packers. I don't see the Packers trying to trade up for a guy who probably is probably regarded as a top 20 player. Um, I personally, as a guard, I think he's probably more top 35 based on the arm length. Um, so it's really just going to see how, how the draft shakes out. He's probably one of the more intriguing guys in the draft as far as in this class, as far as, you know, how guys view him. I know, you know, probably right out the gate, I think we had, you know, to least probably, you know, maybe even top 10, top 15. Uh, I mean, he certainly, you know, has, you know, the athleticism for it. Uh, he's at 9.6. And that's at the tackle. If you probably listed him as a guard, um, he's probably even, you know, further, you know, probably in the nine eight, nine nine, you know, type uh, range. So, I mean, if, I would, I would definitely be interested at, you know, guard if he did for some reason fall. Um, actually, I just plugged it in. He'd be at almost a perfect ten <laughs> for a guard. So. Yeah. It, I, I mean, I'd love to have him, but it, it just seems like it's 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 not meant to be. So, yeah. but, you know, stranger things have happened. You know, we've got seven, eight quarterbacks that are going to be overdrafted. So, you know, somebody's got to slide. Uh, it's got to be a wait and see. Yep. So somebody who's more realistic as we move down this list, uh, center only, if you ask me, and that's <laughs> West Virginia's Zach Frazier. Uh you know, again, as we talked about earlier, centers are normally a little bit shorter. Uh, I've got Zach at 6'2 and 313. Um, he's a former wrestler. Yep. So, you know, he knows about leverage. Uh, he's a guy, you know, as a wrestler, he's going to latch on and he's nearly not going to let go. Um, decent, decent athlete. You know, I mean, centers, when you say decent athlete and center, it's kind of, you kind of have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. You know, because typically centers are not necessarily the most athletic guys, you know, on the team at all. I don't think we even have. Did, did he test it? I don't think he tested at the combine, uh, Brian. No, yeah, he's, so. he's got that leg injury that he's coming off of. So, uh, probably, yeah, it is true. His pro day, we'll, we'll hear, get some numbers. Yeah, pro day for centers, I think, you know, because there always is a question of athleticism, because a lot of times your centers in college, you know, they probably were guards or maybe even tackles in high school but you know going up to the next level you know depending on you know where they are with between size and athleticism they get they get a for lack of better words downgraded uh to center so um athleticism for, for zach will be key uh i i think he's probably it's really hard to gauge the center class in my opinion he might be the number two or number three center. It just really all depends. Like, obviously, you know, Jackson Powers Johnson is the unquestioned number one. Uh, it depends on if people want Graham Barton as a guard or a center. Um, I think Zach as a center only prospect, he may be the number three guy. If we're, if we're looking at those two guys ahead of him, um, as far as, you know, for, for NFL, you know, recipe of success. So it's, it's really going to come down to his pro, uh, his pro day, but, uh, I, I do think the Packers may have a, a an interest in possibly updating the, the center position, and, and that's why this class is just so pivotal because we've got we've got Zach Tom who we know can play center at a high level. It's a question of do they want to put him at center or do they want to try somebody else and leave him out there at right tackle? Uh, this is this is this is probably the the question for me. And this year's draft class uh, on offense is how how that best five is going to shake out. Uh, any more notes for for Zach Bryan? Uh, yeah, actually, he's he was actually just under six three. He was six two and uh, five eight. So 
just under that with 32 and a quarter inch arms. So not, you know, obviously short arms. Um, also interesting to note though, is he, he's, he was, he started at guard in 2020. So he has some guard experience. That's always a good plus. Um, and like you said, he's the Packers. I don't like guys who have wrestling backgrounds. They've taken a number of guys. Um, if you want to remember back to Scott Wells, he had a wrestling background. Uh, Kenny Clark has a wrestling background. So and a couple other guys have wrestling backgrounds. So they like those guys that are, uh, multi-sport athletes who play multiple sports in high school, especially uh, offensive linemen and defensive linemen that have uh, wrestling experience, wrestling background, and whatnot. Um, so I think, and I think he's athletic. But I think he'd be on the board to me. For me, he's probably center three. Just, to, but I think it dep- uh, every team might be different depending on how they view uh, what they want from. I'm sorry, what they want from their center, what and how they view their center. Some guys may have Barton above him. Some guys, some teams may have him above Barton. Um, but yeah, I think he's athletic enough to do it. And like I said, he's like you said, he's got the wrestling background, so he knows about leverage and getting low and staying low. And it shows in his film too. So um, to me, he's probably um, second round, probably mid second round, maybe late second round. I think it's about where his uh, where I, I see him going. Ah, uh, I, I haven't. I, I really need to see him test honestly. Right now, I've got him at the top of the third. Um, it really just depends on how runs go. And like you said, it it's a, a quote unquote deep center class. Yeah. And it just depends on where, I mean, Jackson is going to set the market. And once Jackson, once Graham are gone, uh, people will start looking for Zach Frazier services. I just, it's just hard for, to really, really project a center. Uh, I mean, obviously we took Myers a couple of years ago in the second round and uh, I'm still catching hell for that. So, um, but you know, you live and you learn. So I, I really don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick based on just tape third round, top of the third round. I think that's a good spot for him. If he, if he tests something out of the water, you know, and just, you know, has an excellent pro day, I could see him in the back of the second. It just, I think as the center three in this year's class, it really just depends on the run. It just depends on the run because, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, they don't think about how the draft ebbs and flows based on the talent that's still available on the board. Uh, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets called in the second round, but I think his true, true value is probably at the top of the third, maybe. Uh, I think the last time I, I double checked, I probably have him maybe in the top 80 somewhere around there as far as just pure talent. Right. So, but sometimes, you know, there's a need and teams will jump up to get their guy. So we'll see. I'll be looking for that, that West Virginia pro day. So we've got another tackle ish guy and that's South Dakota state's Mason McCormick. I think we did get some shout outs for him on the tackle list, but, uh, I'm looking at uh, Mason McCormick as a as a guard. Uh, he does have the requisite arms. At, uh, I got him at 33 and 7 eighths, so almost 34. Um, but he's a little bit smaller. He's at 6'4". Uh, we, we've had some smaller smaller tackles here and there, Brian. But I think at 6'4", uh, I think I'm going to want him. Uh, I think I'm going to want him inside. Uh, what would you say? Uh, yeah, he uh, has to be. Six, six four three oh nine with actually uh the combine is just under 33 inch arms so that's that's for sure uh that's for sure a guard in green bay um you know he was a long time starter there at, at south dakota state um and i think i don't have the numbers actually in front of me i wish i had the numbers in front of me um i think of something else um yeah he's he's an athletic dude i think he's a long time starter there um my only thing is he's he doesn't have any uh tackle experience Again, like I said, that's kind of an iffy thing for the Packers, so I don't know if he'll be on their board. Uh, I think it was a now I think about it, it was like a four year starter or something like that there. But um, he's a good player, like I said. Uh, obviously, a uh, little bit of a question with competition, but again, South Dakota State, North Dakota State tend to put out a lot of offensive linemen into the into the league, so I don't think that's too much of a worry. Like I said, usually those guys are ready for the league. They come in, they get good coaching down there for surprisingly for playing FCS level. Um, but he's a good athlete, like I said. Um, you know he's had some inconsistent play here and there, uh, but overall he's been, he was pretty good, um, pretty good actually in 23, and he actually be, uh, improved his run blocking a lot this past season. Um, 
so I don't know if he's gonna be like I said, I don't know if he's gonna be on the Packers board, but um I think it's possible. Um again, no tackle experience, but um probably a, a late, probably early, I have him as early day three um type of pick that um the Packers may look at him maybe if he slips a little bit. Early day three, I'm thinking he's solidly day two. And the reason why is McCormick almost has a perfect rasp of 997. Um, if he was listed, you know, drafted as a tackle, which we know he won't be, at least for the Packers' purposes, uh, he's at a 945. Um, if he was to be day three, I don't think he escapes the fourth round. Just, I mean, the Packers aren't the only team that values RAS. Um, so there's going to be somebody who, you know, like, well, who's there? Who's there? And there's going to be some, some, some regional scout, I guess, probably in the Midwest. He's going to run up to like, hey, this guy right here. Yeah. You know, that's, that's probably going to be how Mason McCormick gets drafted. Um, I mean, the, the, I think it's something to be said uh, when you have a guy who's almost got a perfect, a perfect RAS score. I think it's, I think it's something to be said because that's, they don't come around often. Well, as often as you'd like. I mean, every class, there's somebody who's up there in the nine nines, nine eights. They're normally receivers or running backs or something of that nature. But to get an offensive lineman to to set the tone for for athleticism, I think he's somewhere on their board. We could we could call it maybe comp pick time. You know, those round three pick, one hundred and twenty, whatever the case may be. Um, I, but I don't think he escapes the fourth round just because of his athleticism. And like you said, South Dakota State, if there was a small school that puts out quality NFL talent, it's it's South Dakota State. So, I mean, we, we should know, obviously, from, from last year's class. So, you know, I, I think he's I think he's possibly just off the athleticism alone. Um it's I haven't seen too much tape on on Mason just because you know playing at a smaller school, even though as as good as South Dakota State is, you know they don't get a they don't end up on on TV, uh, especially down here in Texas very often. But um, I did the little bit I could see. Um, he does he the athleticism does show. Um, I wouldn't call him a, a mauler per se, but he does finish, and yep. and I think based on what we're seeing, you know, with, with the, the growth of the offensive line, I think Brian Kudikas is going to kind of move more to guys who are, who are finishers and maulers. Uh, and we'll, we'll see, you know, as the 2024 class plays out. All right. So we've got Dominic Pooney out of Kansas. Uh, I think some guys we're looking for him to make the tackle list. And um, he, he, I mean, he certainly fits the mold. I've got him at 6'5", uh, and I've got his arms right at 33, three and eighths. Um, he is an athletic dude. Um, not, I wouldn't say high end athletic, but um, he does have the athleticism that you would expect in a tackle. But um, we're looking for him at guard. Uh, yeah. Why is that, Brian? Um it's somewhat similar to like um, somewhat similar to uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Jordan Morgan and, and uh, Troy Fontenot and stuff like that. He's he played tackle, but he has kind of that, that guard build, that wide body build. Um, and he played he played left tackle this year, but the year before he played um, guard. Um, and then his previous before Louis, before uh, Kansas, uh, he was at a uh, can't remember think of school it is right now. The D two school. I couldn't even remember. Yeah, I, I I have my notes. So I have to double check, but um, anyway, he he was tackled there too, but like I said, he got the wide body. You know, even though he's six five, three hundred, he's got you know like the thirty three inch arms, whatever. Uh, didn't have a great forty though, five three five, which is kind of on the high side for the Packers. But all, his other athletic testing was pretty good. It was really good actually. His agility testing it like a seven four seven three cone, which is really good. Um, the Packers prefer their guy, like their guys to be seven seven five or better. Um, but you know, uh, the threshold is about like seven, eight, five, something like that. But if you're over seven, seven, five, you're, you're pretty much there for the Packers. Um, and he's got that tackle experience. The Packers love that, of course. Um, 
you know, he's, he's like I said, he's a, he's not fast, of course, obviously he had that five, three, five, but um, he can move. He can, he's athletic. He can move from side to side. So like that. Um, another guy who you can basically probably drop in there right guard. He can start for 10 years and then, you know, he can pop over to, um, to right tackle. If there's an injury in a game and stuff like that, he could be your, your, you know, in game, you know, uh, injury type of thing. Um, but like you say, he's, he's an athletic. He's pretty good. He's a good athlete, not amazing. Um, he only had a eight, 807 Raz, which is still pretty good, but it's not like you know nine uh, stuff like that. But the Packers like those guys with over eight Raz scores, of course, too. Um, and he's a good run blocker. Actually, he you know he'll he'll he'll, he'll um, again not a mauler per se, but like you know he'll he doesn't just get in the way. You know he tries to does try to you know put guys down and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think. Again, he's he's a solid dude. He doesn't have a huge upside. He's a little older, but he's a dude. You like I said, you drop him in there, and you get a, you get like eight, ten year star out of him. Yeah, you know, eight, eight is, and that's eight for a guard. That's not eight for a tackle. Um, right. it was at eight oh seven. So that's that's eight for a guard. At, at a tackle, he'd probably be. I'd imagine he'd probably be somewhere in the in the sevens. And oh. um. What do, what do we discover this week, uh, Brian? I think I think Brian's threshold is is it seven five eight? I think, I think we discovered that this week as we as we, as we went through our research. Um, so at, at eight oh nine as a guard, um, um, we're pretty much locked in as a guard. I know you know we've got some uh, some Big Twelve homers who were you know looking for him to get on the tackle list, but like I said he's he's quick. But he's not fast. Yeah, he's he's not a um, guard. He's, 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 he's a yeah, he's a six six five, almost one away from that dreaded number uh, as a tackle. So that that so buyer beware on the uh, on the tackle and for Dominic Cooney. But um, there is some little bit of a technique thing there as well that he does need to clean up. Um, he's a He's a decent run blocker. He's a decent pass pro guy. Um, and those are things that can be cleaned up with coaching. Uh, we do have a decent offensive line coach uh, on the roster. Uh, I do believe that that can, you know, there's probably a two to three year window where Pooney can grow into a, into more than just a, a spot starter in the league. But um, for the NFL purposes, uh, definitely guard. I'm leaning Fifth round. What would you say, Ryan? Uh, I think probably fourth. Uh, to me, I think just because of his tackle experience and ability to play tackle, I think that that'll give him a little bit of a boost for teams. Um, yeah, I'd say probably fourth round. Fourth rounder. Uh, yeah. I'm each in the middle, back of the fourth. Back of the fourth. All right, we're gonna stay in the Midwest. And there's Illinois' Isaiah Adams. Illinois has been putting out a lot of quality guys lately, and, and Adams just adds to that mold. Um, I have him at 6'4", 315, 33, and 7 8, so he's solidly in that guard conversation for the Packers. Uh, I do believe he played some tackle at Illinois, just a couple games. I think he was mostly a guard. Um but uh, so that so there there is some swing tackle possible value there, possibly. I don't think I have any testing numbers for uh, uh, Isaiah, but um, on the tape, um, I did like that he can get to the second level and and in a in a zone uh, type offense, a, a inside outside zone offense. I don't think you can really label Matt Lafleur's offense as just purely outside zone anymore. Um, with the with the ad. The addition of uh, Josh uh, Jacobs, it, it certainly won't be an outside own, zone only scheme anymore. Anyway, uh, so I did like that uh, Adams could get to the second level. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call him a mauler. I don't know if I want to call him a finisher either, but he's athletic, uh, at least from what I can see on the tape. Um, and he and he's and he's. We'll have to see if he if he's. Fast. I don't know if he's fast. I think he's quick, mm. but um, the, the Illinois pro day will kind of give us more on that. So, but he, he, he has the blue collar mindset I'd like to see in the run game. Uh, what would you say about him, Brian? 
Yeah, uh, he did play a bunch of tackle at Illinois, actually. Um, I have to double check my notes of whether the left tackle or right tackle. He did play. He did play tackle. Um, a bit of a little bit of an interesting story too, because he was originally from uh, Canada, and then he was at like a, a Canadian college too, and then he was at or he was at a community college, sorry, Garden City, which is a somewhat well known community college, as far as you know that produces guys that go on to play higher level college, uh, like D one and whatnot. Um, but yeah, he's he actually does have a RAS score. He was a seven five four. Uh, he ran a f- uh, five two two forty. Um, the only thing that's kind of like kind of off the Packer special was some of his explosion testing. He had just a 24 and a half inch vertical, which is pretty low. And then, um, his broad jump was 806, which is kind of yeah, okay ish. But, um, yeah, six, four and a half, like you said, 315, uh, just under 34 inch arms. Um, yeah, he's he's des- he's like we said, he's he's basically he's gonna be a guard. Um, but he's he's been kind of inconsistent, I think mostly it was because he was playing tackle. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be better guard. Um, I don't know if he's on the Packers board, like I said, because of that 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 RAS score. Of course, you got to see his agility because we don't have agility numbers on him right now. Um, I believe Illinois did have their pro days, but I haven't seen yet uh, agility numbers for him. Uh, so that's something we got to keep an eye on and look for. Um, that might help his RAS score. It might boost him up if he has some good agility scores. But um, yeah, he's he's a good. Like I said, he's or we said he's he's versatile. He can play tackle, he can play guard. Um, his future again is probably inside a guard. Um, I kind of agree with you though. He's not, he's not like a finisher, uh, in the run game, uh, he's probably best attribute is as a pass blocker. So his run game needs to, his play in the run game needs to get better. Uh, his technique needs to get, needs to get better there, uh, for the, for the NFL. Yeah. See, you, you said a seven, five, six or a seven, five, four. What was that? Seven, five, four, seven, five, four. Okay. So he's, he's just a hair under, the threshold uh, that we've seen from Brian Glennifence over the last uh, six years. Um, if, if he did do an agility test, I mean, he just had to do decent at it. And, you know, he may push above that seven, five, eight. Uh, so I still like him. I mean, seven, five, four, seven, five, eight. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's 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 kind of arguing over pennies if, if that makes if that sense to you. So uh, we'll we'll see if he can be the new benchmark for for uh, the Packers uh, metric testing on athleticism. I, I've got Adams maybe as possibly back of the fifth, maybe early six. Yeah. Uh, what would you say? Yeah, I'd say that probably sounds about right. Um, you know, like I said, he's an old like I said, he's an older guy. Um, cause he came from Canada and I think he went to a, a college in Canada and then came over here. Uh, let me double check here. Yeah. He was born in 2000. So, um, in, uh, July 2000. So he's a little bit older guy. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, I think he's, yeah, he's a guard and, uh, day like fifth round. Yeah. Yeah. I probably say late, late fifth. Late fifth it is. Yep. All right. We're going to head to the East coast. Uh, we've got two uh, ACC guys for you. We've got Miami's Javion Cohen. Um, I like Cohen. Um, I've got him at 6'4". Uh, Brian's going to give you the bad news. He's a little bit over 321. Um, but the arm length uh, is is sufficiently there. Uh, I've got him at 34 even. Um He's definitely a, I would say he's definitely more pass pro ready uh, than he is in, in the run blocking. Uh, he did not allow a sack in his career. Um, and, and that's, and that's something that you want to, that you love, you know, for a guy to be able to hang his hat on. Um, so will, I mean, he played a little bit of tackle. I do believe at Miami. Um, will he be, you know, probably not as six, four, um, he may be listed as a guard, depending on, you know, how guys look at him. Um, but I think I think he's I think he's there as far as like a, a solid like reserve uh, possible swing tackle. I don't know if I wanted to leave, put that label on him just yet. Emergency tackle. Absolutely. I don't know if I want to put that swing tackle label right on him. Um, technique needs to get better. Must get better, actually. Um, and that's probably something that you can see as, you know, a player grows into an NFL offseason, uh, grows into under, a you know, a system. Um, I think possibly 
year three, you've really got somebody that, you know, possibly could push for starting reps. Uh, Brian, what would you say about Cohen? Um, yeah, he's another guy that's, I, I'm pretty, I'm, I have a feeling that he's not really on their board. Um, Cause as far as I, information I have is he doesn't have any tackle experience as far as I had information I have, but I got to go, go back and double check. Um, but you know, he was, a he was Alabama transfer and he just played this past year at, um, at like you said, like Miami, uh, he was a star with Alabama, but then he transferred to Miami, which is kind of interesting. Like, cause he has ordered to start Alabama. So I don't know if, if they wanted him to move on or he just decided to move on and try to go somewhere else for different experience or what have you, or maybe he's got a big, uh, NLI offer or something like that. But, um, but yeah, like you said, he's, he's 324. So he's kind of over the threshold. He's not extremely over it, of course, like we said, it's only a couple of pounds, three pounds or whatever. Um, I don't think the weight would be too much. Initially. He has good arm length at 34 inches. Uh, we just don't have any athletic testing on him. Um, but I just, I don't think, I don't know. I just, his movement skills, I don't know if they're good enough for the Packers. Uh, just playing, playing like an outside zone. I think he'd probably be better in a power or a gap scheme. Um, so yeah, but I, I have him as like a late day three guy. Um, Cause I just don't think he's that going to test that well. The ACC isn't what it used to be, Brian. Um, but he did look decent or more than decent in the ACC. Um, oh, 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 God knows why he left Alabama. Um, I mean, Saban, you know, in his, you know, swan song speech talked about, you know, players asking how much they're getting paid and, you know, the playing time that they need to meet thresholds and things of that nature. So, um, it could be that Cohen possibly walked in and took some money in Miami. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of uh, notes on him from his days in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I do believe, though, when he signed to Bama, he was signed as a tackle. Um, but then Miami moved him inside, which probably was for the best. But, um, yeah, we can get some testing numbers. I don't know if Miami has had their pro day yet. Not yet. Um, but when you're talking about a guy who's a day three dude, you, you want to do everything. You know, if there's if there's going to be an NFL scout, you know, watching people, you know, make paper planes, you know, you want to be there and, and, and show what you can do. So hopefully he's at the pro day and he tests. Uh, if he can if, if he can hit that threshold of if he can get a solid, let's say, eight point three, I think he's on the board, uh, you know, just given, you know, his 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 body of work at Miami. I mean, was he dominant? No, but I mean, Miami wasn't. Well, you know, Miami starts out with all the hoopla and then they come back to earth. But uh, I think he did a decent job of there at Miami. Um, I, I think he deserves a shot on an NFL roster. I th I think if he tests and if he tests well, he's probably in the fifth round. If he doesn't test at all, which I would really wag my finger at whoever's in his camps telling him not to test unless it's just abysmal. Uh, I think he's a solid six round candidate. Uh, where, where would you place him, Brian? Um, yeah, like I said, six, like, yeah, six round. Um, and I just double checked. He had 28 snaps at left tackle in 2020 and then all of everything else has been a left guard. So he's had, he's had, he's had a little bit, not much, but a little bit, a um, little bit. Yeah, yeah, not much. I don't know if that's enough for the Packers to like it, but, um, but yeah, a six round sounds about right to me. Fair enough. We'll see where he takes out. All right, we're gonna stay in Coral Gables and remove the Cohen's co uh, teammate, and that's uh, center Matt Lee. Uh, a little bit undersized. Uh, well, not, let's say I, actually he's probably about good size for a center at six, four, um, barely 32 inch arms. So he is definitely center only for probably a lot of teams. Uh, he did pretty good. He did pretty good for, you know, Miami, um, decent strength. I wouldn't necessarily call him fast or quick. But uh, he, he did a decent job at Miami, uh, decent in pass pro, uh, decent in, in run game. I wouldn't call him a mauler, wouldn't call him a finisher. I mean, he did test very well, but when it comes to centers, it's kind of hard to, 
I don't know. It's, it's you, you kind of take it with a grain of salt because typically centers are typically, you know, all all types of, of, of various body types and various levels of athleticism. So uh, and then if you look at the centers of yesteryear, uh, today's centers are far more athletic. So sometimes you look at it, it's like, well, you know, is this really what we think we see? Uh, Ryan, what would you say about Matt Lee? Yeah, I love Matt Lee. He's been one of my guys since uh, I think 2021 season <laughs> uh, when he was at UCF. He, he was a two-year start at UCF, I believe it was, and they transferred to Miami this past year. Um, or might have been three-year start at UCF. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, just under 6'4", 301, uh, smaller, a little bit smaller. Uh, and actually, he put on some some weight at the Senior Bowl. He was like 288, I believe it was. Um, so um, he's finally put on some bulk. That's something that you saw in film is that he – he was kind of, he wasn't a really big, super big dude and he needed some, to add some bulk um, because sometimes he'd have some problems with some bigger defense tackles. Um, but the thing I always liked about his game was to me, he was always trying to go out there and maul dudes and, and bury guys and somebody, even especially even back when he was at UCF, when there was a very, he played in a very uh, run heavy offense there at UCF. And you saw him in the run game, just trying to, a lot of times just trying to bury and maul dudes um it's just you know it's his, maybe the bulk wasn't there at the time but he looks he, you know he's up over 301 now which is good he put on some mass hopefully that helps him with um you know the, the power and stuff like that uh but again like he's like he's a two also he, he has some good testing he ran a 503 40 which is really good um he had a higher ris score uh which was like a nine 986 actually which is pretty high which for center um although he didn't have to do any agility, te- agility testing but uh, we'll see once they have the miami's pro day like we said but um, yeah, he's one of my favorite centers in the class. To me, he's pretty underrated, underrated at least in the media. I don't, we'll see how the NFL views him. Um, to me, he's a. Uh, I think I think you t- to me I would I would take him in the fourth round. Um, yeah, I would take him in the fourth round and just put him at center and just lock him down. So you're saying he's center four? Yeah, I was. Yeah, probably. Yeah, center four. Okay. Um, I can't even disagree. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I want to, but I can't. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I don't know about fourth round. That's pretty high. And like you said, I, mean, I call him an effort player. Call him an effort player. Uh, that 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 that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Like you said. Bigger, bigger dudes, and they're going to get even bigger in the NFL. I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if I could risk my fourth rounder. I, I love, you know, that might be my favorite round. I love fourth round picks. I just do, and I and I hate to to see them uh, just thrown away, just with no reckless abandon. I I I love fourth round picks. It, you you find you find guys in the fourth round that probably should have gone in the second round or sometimes you find guys that probably should have gone in the sixth round, but that's, that's what's so fun about the fourth round. It's my, it's my favorite number as well. Uh, I won't go into that rant, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the fourth round for Matt Lee. Uh, I'll meet you. I'll meet you in the, the top of the fifth at center four in this wildly deep class. I think there might be some guys ahead of him, that we haven't named or won't name because of where they played, which you should always not draft people for where they played before what they did. Uh, that team that possibly lost its head coach this year. Uh, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but I'll, if he got called in the fourth round, I wouldn't. You, th- you think the Packers are interested? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Like I said, cause of his testing. Um, and he was a, he was actually a tackle in high school. I I'd have to double check to see if he played anything other than center calls, but I don't think he did. Um, but yeah, athletically, I think, I think he's good. No okay. Pack. I I did see the little bit on UCF, but you, again, UCF runs the ball like 40 times a game. So, you know, I think I always put an asterisk on teams like that. Cause then, you know, like, Oh, you know, they're a good run blocker, whatever the case may be. But then it's like, okay, but like everybody they they get is just a like a pure run blocker. So sometimes I wonder, like, is it really them doing it, or is it the fact that you know it's just five 
above average to very good run blockers who are just, you know, all, all hats in. And then you might even have a fullback or a run back, running back in there, you know, as a lead blocker as well. So, um, but you're right. The testing is there. So we'll, we'll see where Matt Lee, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my fifth round, but I guess if I see him in the fourth, I can, I can live with it. I, I'm, I may be upset with Brian Good because we're taking a center in the fourth round of all things, but uh, we, yeah. we do have some concern there. So I, I guess, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I just checked. He has, he has 70 snaps at left guard in, in 2019, but everything else has been at center. So. Works for me. All right, Brian, before we get out of here, who did we talk about that you love? Um, there's a few guys. Um, I like, um, Sincere Hainsworth from Tulane, another center, uh, smaller dude, like six foot or six foot one, 300 pounds, but he's got long arms, 33, 33 inch arms. So, um, you look at him, he's a small kind of squatty guy, but he's got long arms. He's a good athlete. I think he could, he could be a developmental guy. Um, Ladarius Henderson from Michigan. Uh, he's, he played at Arizona state before, uh, he's kind of played all over. Um, I think he's, he played left tackle this year, but he didn't play that well. I think he's a better fit. He was a guard. He's another guy to keep an eye. He's got long arms. Uh, Hunter Norzad from Penn State, another guy who's played ta- uh, guard and center. He played center this la- this past year. It looks like it's probably where he'll end up. Uh, but again, he can help you out at guard if need be. And then uh, one late uh, late draft slash you know UDFA guy, I think to keep an eye on that the Packers. I think they'll like uh, Preston Wilson from Oklahoma State. He's had ta- a tackle and guard experience, and he's like the size they like six four, six five, you know, three hundred pounds, and a solid athlete and. Um, you know, he can play in the zone. They can pull. He can play. He can be a puller. He can do all these different things. Um, and, I, and I think that's anyone else for you. Well, there's one guy which I had to fight to, to the death for, but we're not going to talk to him in detail. And that's uh, Boston College's Christian Mahogany. Um, Brian doesn't like him because he's a power gap guy. We could use some power gap guys on this team. Uh, based on the running back stable that we're looking at as guys looking to run through and not around people. Um, he will be covered on Joseph Gems at some point at this time, probably this week. Uh, has zero tackle experience. I don't care about that. The guy just runs over people. He was the best offensive lineman at the Shrine Bowl, and that was good enough for me. Uh, I think he's solidly day two probably in the middle to the back of the third round based on the run. Um, so we'll see. And then the other person, which I could live with, is Cooper Beebe from Kansas State. Um, the dude's huge. Uh, it's probably like 338, something like that. Um, but he, he he uses the weight. He is a bit of a mauler. Um, but maybe too, too, much, too much sand in the pants for the Packers to be interested. However... <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in the fourth round, even though I just argued about a center being taken in the fourth round. I'll take a guard who's huge and probably can get some pancakes because I like pancakes for breakfast, especially on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. Probably get covered in Joseph Gems at some point. All right. Next week, we've got tight ends. I know some people are like, oh, we went out of order, um, but we did it for a reason because we just took two tight ends last year. And I know some of y'all are in love with pass catch. You want in seven rounds, they took seven wide receivers or seven tight ends. You'd be happy. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, you guys are not part of the front office. But we will touch on tight ends next week. And then we will get into the defense, which yep. will probably blow you guys away for the first round. But all right. Any other closing notes for you, Brian? Uh, not much other than uh, I would say Cooper B became at 322 at the combine and then he had 31 and a half inch arms, so that's kind of why I don't um have him on my Packers board, but I know you like him, that's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, he did cut weight, but he would yeah, you he could did. tell on you could tell at Kansas State that guy was eating good, yeah. He was playing, you could tell he was playing heavier, he was playing 330 ish. I, I, I've been to, I lived in Kansas, Kansas City barbecue, you can't stay away from, so I don't blame him. Yeah. It's the, it's the best part. It's only a real barbecue in America. Somebody's going to get exception to that, but whatever. All right, guys, we're out of here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week for another episode of Packers Draft Room.